Hello viewers. Welcome back to Mopar 4-door A-Body Central. So working on this 1972 Plymouth Valiant with a famous slant 6 engine in it and like a lot of these projects where the car itself is in pretty good condition but it's just an old car you have to work through a lot of different little, little things I guess you would say. So that's what I've been up to and I've recorded most of that so you'll get to see that but one thing is pretty interesting that I ran into. So this car runs pretty good. Uh, I don't have any concerns that it's got engine problems. I think it's pretty sound based on the way it sounds when it's running. But one unusual thing that was going on is I noticed that it was taking quite a while for the oil light to go off when you start it after it's been sitting a few hours, especially overnight, especially longer than the day. So you just sit there and just wait, you know, 1,000 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000. Finally, the oil light bumps off and stays off. It doesn't come back on. And if the engine stalls, which it has several times while you're trying to move it around, then it takes a while for the oil light to come back on. So I don't feel like there's a problem with the oil pressure. It's just that it, the oil pressure is not building right away. So based on my experience with these i feel like that there was something going on with the oil filter or the check valve in the standpipe on the oil pump so let me go ahead and show you what's going on with the oil pump i don't know that there is anything going on with it but oh let's see we need to get a light probably and this camera my new camera does not have a light on it that's easy to get to but if you look down in there there's the oil filter that is in mouth that is integral with the oil pump itself the oil pump is right underneath it it's just one piece and that part in the middle is what's called the standpipe that extends up into the oil filter the oil filter mounts vertically with the open end facing downward of course so there's the real possibility that all the oil that stays in the oil filter could drain back out. The the hole that goes back to the engine gallery is on that plate there, kind of, it's kind of at about the 3 o'clock, 2.45 position there. It's kind of hard to see. I apologize. I left my light in the house. But that tube in the center, which just presses in, that's my canopy you're hearing in the background. It has a spring-loaded check plate I think you would call it check valve which you could push downward from above so um, so it opens against it, it opens with oil pressure so the oil the way the oil flow happens the oil flows from the supply gallery there I just showed you into the outside of the oil filter through the base plate goes through the filter media then comes back down and it goes back to the engine through that tube right there in the center and so ideally you want the oil to remain in the oil filter you don't want it draining back out so most modern oil filters have what's called an anti-drain back valve on them for that exact purpose so that it it doesn't do what this this seems to do which is having to fill the oil filter up each time uh, this camera boy it's a great camera i really like it but it's uh, it's it pops up things that it tries to control what I'm doing. Sometimes I swing it around left to right. It'll say, you're painting too fast. Or it'll, I tried to hold it, up, you know, show you that view there before I started this video already. And it started, it kept saying something about AGS enabled recording pause. And I thought, I don't need you to do that. I just want to take a video. No, please don't do that. So I had to learn how to go into the settings and disable that feature. But on to the oil filter. So this car has not had an oil change in many years. It's not been driven in many years. It was just parked, stored. So I don't know exactly how old this oil filter is, but it's pretty old. Um, it's got this name on it. So you can figure that out. Um, I have nothing bad to say about these people, but I was doing some research on this filter and this appears to be a Fram filter. The way I know that is because you look at the date code here, that A60861, that's a FRAM date code format. So this is probably a FRAM PH8A that has been repainted to these people's 
color and name and all that just for them. And so uh, <laughs> you can, if you get on the internet and start Googling Fram oil filters, you can kind of get a quick um, rundown about what people think about them. So anyway, that's, that's that. This, this last oil change was done in a, a now defunct quick lube kind of a one-man band operation somewhere way away from here but I had the receipt for it and everything so I know about it's been many years so that's that's potentially part of the problem that this oil filter is not in good condition just because of its age and the oil is old of course but it's not so much a big deal it's not got a lot of miles on it but the one thing that concerned me right away when I took this oil filter off and turned it up and put it in the vise here, and I'm not going to take this oil filter apart. I have no interest in doing that. But if you look here, right there, do you see that? That is a piece of rubber, what appears to be some kind of piece of rubber that is protruding through one of the, protruding through one of the, uh, that's the inlet. The, the round holes are the inlet to the oil filter. But I don't know what that, this camera, this thing just put a little square up in my center, in the right top of my viewfinder. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just get distracted when it does that. <laughs> anyway, so I don't like the looks of that at all. I don't know what that is, but we're going to find out what happens when we pull on it with a pair of pliers. That's what she said. So I'm going to walk over here to the toolbox. And her needle nose back over here this thing, let me give it a little bit more crank down on the I mean you can't crank it down too much it just collapses the can of the filter so let's do as long as I'm pulling a tooth out let's just grab this okay well it does not come out easily what is that So it didn't come out of the engine. That's part of the filter. So if I try to keep pulling on that thing to get it out of there, it's not going to come out easily. So really wish I had my light in here. Let me just kind of bear with me for a second here. I'm just kind of having to turn you guys all around all over the place. Just kind of looking to see if I... Yeah, hey, I see one over there. I'm one of these people that I'm, I'm not that completely organized in my garage, but I know where everything's at. So I found a light here. So let's just look down in this filter to see what the heck is that? I'll tell you what I think it is. I think that the oil drain back valve, the anti-drain back valve has possibly come apart or was not manufactured very good because I'm going to get my Baldwin filter out. This is the one I bought to put on. Let's replace this one. Baldwin is a very good filter, still made in America. Hot, hot, hot out here. Uh-huh. Okay. I think I see our answer already. So, if we look at this filter, there's nothing in those holes there. Not at all. So, look at this filter. There's the anti-drain back valve right there above these, these holes. So, it's just basically like a one-way deal. When the, when the oil... When the oil enters the filter through these inlet holes here, it pushes past that. That's like a flap, and it pushes past that. And then when it fills up and it's turned this way, the pressure of the oil on it is supposed to close that off, and it can't do what I think is happening to this car. So um, so I'm curious about something. Uh, I think I would like to give this little test. 
So I'm going to take my Howard Smith inspired. You don't know who that is. That's old car alley. Um, I'm going to take my Howard inspired oil drain apparatus. And I'm going to fill this filter up with oil. Whoop, okay. There we go. So. Okay, so now I'm going to try to uh, dump the thing off here. So you can take it out. I just saw a bubble come out of there. So I'm going to turn this filter. And see if it looks like it's actually... So I think what I'm going to do is, um, I don't think that's a very good way to try to do this. So I'm going to try to find a plug to put in this. And then I'm going to fill it up with oil again and put the plug in there. And then I'm going to turn it vertically and we'll see if it leaks. So we'll do that. Okay, so I think our hunch about this oil filter having a problem is correct. So I went out to lunch and went to the bank. I was out about two hours, two and a half hours or so. It's been probably about a total of three hours as this filter has been sitting here. And what I did was I put a plug in the bottom of it. I filled it up with oil, put a plug in the bottom of it to keep it from just running back out, obviously. And then put a towel under it, a shop towel, and watched it. And as you can see, if I click this click 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 light it's leaking right here it is leaking obviously see the big puddle there it continues to do so and I believe that the leak is coming right out of that that where that rubber has extruded out of the hole there now there's a little bit of seepage around maybe that plug you see that tape that I sealed it with is a little bit damp but I don't see any other active leaks so I'm going to just go ahead while I'm doing something else I'm going to go ahead and take this out yeah, that's a lot of oil so I'm going to take this out and I'm going to replace it with another one to clean Let's see what time it is. Over there. So I give it about 30 minutes, and so, it, so we'll see how long it, if it leaks in 30 minutes or so. It's about 5:30 now. So we'll come back to that, and we'll just see if it slows down. See what happens. So while we're waiting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clean this. Anyway, I showed you this before, but just to kind of recap this. What we have down in this oil filter, you can see the top of it down there. That top, there's a disc in there in the bottom of that tube that is kind of spring on the bottoms of it. So oil pressure going back into the engine forces that flap open. And then when there's no oil pressure against it, just the oil, it should stay closed and keep the keep everything from draining into the oil galleries there's the there's the feed from the oil pump I was telling you about and I see something on there looks like a little bit of goo or something there so I'm going to spray that out with some cleaner 
Let's see if that'll kind of help that come back a little bit. Maybe that'll seal off because it had some oil in it today and then it drained away. So it's not sealing exactly perfectly. So, all right. So we'll do all that and we'll come back in here and look at our filter situation. But yeah, that's just to recap what this is. This is a, this apparently is a FRAM filter. And that's, uh, it's an old one, but anyway. All right, we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so this filter never did leak anymore, even with a fresh towel out here. So, I don't know why a fresh towel would have made it leak if it wasn't going to, but it did not. But, took the plug back out of it and looked down in there, and it's probably, I don't know, it's probably leaked two-thirds of the oil out of it, so leaked quite a bit, so that's pretty significant. So I think that will, that will improve things. I've cleaned and cleaned and cleaned on this oil pump stand pipe, stand, stand pipe out here. That little flapper in the bottom of it, that little disc valve, is just, it will not completely hold fluid. And that's not an ideal situation, but I'm not going to dig into this any further right now. I'm just going to run it for a while. Hopefully the cleaning abilities of the oil will maybe uh, get that thing to work a little bit better. We hope. If not, I'll have to eventually just go in there and take the standpipe out, which is kind of an ordeal, and work on it until it seals completely up. It may never seal completely up. The spring is not very, spring on it's not very strong, so I don't know. Anyway, I will do an update in the morning and we'll see, uh, we'll see if that helped or not with our oil pressure light situation. See you then. Okay, so it's been about 18 hours since I've parked this car in here without it running. And so I thought we would just go ahead and do a cold start on this and see if we've helped our oil pressure building situation. Based on some research that I've done after I made the last clip of this, I think we've probably not made much of an improvement on it because I think we're going to have to do some other work to um, address a couple things. So we'll get into that in another video. Well, let's, let's just go ahead and uh, start this thing up and see how it acts. So this choke is not, it's not going to run on fast idle because I'm working on the choke. I'm going to have to kind of improvise with my choke there. This car's got a uh, heated well type choke, manifold mounted choke, but the manifolds on it is for a later car. So I'll show you that maybe coming up. So beforehand, I'd usually, I'd say about a good seven seconds before the oil light bumped out, just running it at a slow idle. So see what we get. Well, it's about the same, so. So anyway, yeah. One thing I've noticed, well, there's two things that are going on. So one thing I noticed, that this engine was quite low on oil. When I filled my bottle up, I drained it into my drain pan yesterday. It did change oil, of course. So when I filled my bottle up, this is how much oil was in it. And that's about the, um, I don't know, that's probably about the, that's about, that's barely three quarts of oil in it. So it was supposed to have five, so it was low on oil. And the oil quality was probably poor because um, I don't know what kind of oil it was, was in it. And so that, that was a couple of things to do with it that were, weren't helping the situation. But this time I noticed that I didn't get any kind of engine noise. Now that, of course, those of you familiar with these slant, these slant sixes, you know it's, they've got mechanical 
valves on them, mechanical tappets. You have to adjust the lash on them and they're a little bit noisy anyway. Um, the, this one I think is a little bit noisier than it should be. It's probably going to need to have the valve run on it. But that said, before I was getting an, a noticeable bearing noise before the well pressure light went out and now I'm not getting that. So uh, that's a good sign. That means we're making improvements. But I, I think I have a handle on what's going on with, with this now and I think we can improve it. It's going to take some work. Some kind of distasteful work, but we'll get there. So I would say that as bad as it looked, that that oil filter was probably not, I mean, it was leaking down. That's obvious that it was leaking. Went in an inverted position, but I would say uh, it's not the root cause of it. It probably exacerbated the, the oil pressure delay, but they're not supposed to take that long to turn the well pressure light off. They're just not supposed to. A couple seconds is okay, but that was about seven seconds, I think. So Chrysler actually put a TSB out on that and made an engineering change at one point. So we'll get into that. I don't want to overload you too much information right now. So anyway, for the rest of the day today, I'm just going to pick away a few little fun little things on this car uh, just to kind of have some fun before I have to go back to work. So appreciate you watching. I hope this was a little bit interesting, a little bit informative. That's the way I try to make my videos. And uh, Anyway, I will see you on the next one. Have a good one.